you know, Getaway Clean was a solid record, but I think it was, you know, if, if you listen to it, it was kind of very raw. You know, it didn't, it wasn't as polished. So, and I think a lot of that had to do with, you know, Master P was trying to figure out what his sound was going to be. And he was always kind of trying to figure out what he wanted to be and how he wanted to be and what that sound was and what his moniker was going to be. And I think, you know, with the different production and trying to have a different sound for each, each record to go on this album, I think it was, I think it was kind of visionary, but at the same time, didn't show, you know, exactly the direction that, that, you know, that was going to take place. So I think as you move, move from there to, to, you know, as you start getting into the ghettos trying to kill me and you start getting the 99 ways to die, you're starting to hear a kind of its own sound, a variety of producers putting it, putting the records together um, because you don't want to have one sound on an album. So a lot of times when you have multiple producers, you, you have a more national sounding record instead of a local sounding record. So Getaway Clean was, you know, a solid record, but it was more of a local, a local record. And until 99 Ways to Die, that's when you, you became regional. And then, um, um, then when, when you focus on, you know, the ghetto's trying to kill me, that was a regional. But then by the time 99 Ways and True and all, those albums start coming out, then you've got a national sound with a national audience, and you're building that foundation for success for it to grow from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we had uh, thanks to you, we had King George on the show. Um, it was dope to actually uh, chop it up with him because uh, you never really get to hear from him anymore. Um, have you done any any projects with him recently, or plan on doing anything with him? No, I mean, we haven't, you know, I haven't done an album. The last album I did with King was, uh, that hit Billboard charts, was the Hardest Hits 2000 album back in 2000. And I didn't, you know, I haven't wow. done anything with them since then. Um, I know he's working on, you know, he, you know, we talked a few times and he's working on putting together a movie and he's working on doing some other projects. But, you know, nothing's in the works. You never want to say never because... You know, when Penn hates paper, the agreements from people and money changes hands, you never know. But, you know, we, we haven't really talked specifically about doing, you know, anything with King with, uh, with King George and TC getting together to do a project. Now, I know right now he's doing some stuff with uh, some jazz stuff with his, his late great uh, uncle, Henry Butler, the jazz musician. I know he's doing some projects around there, and I know we've talked about doing some stuff with that. But as far as a hip hop record, we haven't. But we did talk a little bit about, you know, the movie and possibly doing some distribution and stuff like that. But no, we we haven't talked specifically about doing another King George album. Yet. Now, now with this, you know, BET uh, series coming out, um, were you able to, you know, talk to Master P? And if so, did you guys talk about possibly doing anything in the future? Or? No, I, you know, I did not connect with P at all. Um, they did everything separate. Like, you know, Saint was interviewed and Snoop was interviewed and King was interviewed and Cali G and myself and so many people, Mia and, 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 and all those folks, Servon and, 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 you know, were all interviewed, but we were never together at the same time. So when they put this together, it kind of, you know, it's a good flow to it from the, the little bit that I've had the, the, to, to see, I got the opportunity to see, because I haven't seen the whole part, and I haven't even seen really, you know, the, the, the way it flows, but I've seen a little bit of the, the way they have it together, and it looks, you know, it coincides all together. Everyone works together, but we were not all in the same, the same space. Now, I did see K. Lou, and I did see uh, St. Charles and talk to him, but those are the only folks that I really, really saw. So at this particular juncture, I would say no, but I will go back to what I said before. Yeah. You never say never. You never know what, what the future entails. I think this No Limit Chronicles is going to, you know, bring a lot of things to the forefront. Some of it good, some of it probably not so good. Some of it uh, uh, paints us, you know, the no overall No Limit in a good light, and some of it probably doesn't. And I think 
I think it's good to tell the story. Uh, and, and as long as we tell the story, there's going to be avenues such as your show and other shows for people to have conversations around what happened at No Limit. And maybe there are things I try to, you know, every time I've come, been on your show or every time we've had a, a conversation, I feel like, oh, I remember, I, oh, I forgot to tell this story or, or you bring out some information or you ask me a question that, me, that gets me to talk about things that maybe I, I haven't thought about in a lot of years. And I think that's what's going to be exciting for people who don't know the story. Because there's certain people that think they do know, but they have no idea of, the, of everything that took place and how we fought and struggled to get records mastered and to get the vinyl done and to get on the road and be in some of the most difficult situations in the country and being in some of the hardest places to be in and some of the hoods and and all of the things that it takes to, to build the foundation of doing an album, people are going to feel it and sense it. And I think it's important. And I think folks like Cali G and King George and St. Charles and, and you know, and as you, as you talk to K. Lou and as you talk to these people who were all part of the success, it's good that everyone's going to be able to get an opportunity to, to tell their side of the story and you never know how much of their side of the story is going to, to make it on screen because sometimes there's just not enough time. I mean, it's great that there's five-part series to this, but, you know, you probably could do a 20-part series of this thing and still not hit all the information and talk about all of the people that were behind the scene. Because I know Sonia C is in, is, is in the docuseries as well, and Mia X, Ricky Williams is, is on the show, and Snoop's on the show. So there's so many people from different angles that are going to kind of tell their part of the No Limit story and how they became a part of, uh, you know, what I would say, changing history. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, like, comment, share. Also go over to UGSForLife.com, download the entire archive, and check out new episodes on Apple Podcasts and Blog Talk Radio.